when I started the videos, like I thought we would all like hang out <laughs> and like we'd all be in it and like we'd like run around the land and stuff. But obviously it didn't happen to be that way. To bring it back to this community, mm -hmm. like what was written was kind of different than like reality. Very different. Like for me, I picked up, like I had, I had like inklings of like things aren't quite right. Mm -hmm. Like the first or second month mm -hmm. that I've been here. I sharing skills is sharing power mm -hmm. in a way. Um, yeah, for sure. You're empowering other people by giving them an ability to do something that is life sustaining. I was watching um, Eternal Sunshine of the Spotless Mind. And then like last night I was sleeping on the couch and like when I woke up, like a shelf was gone because you guys are moving. And I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is so weird. How is the community gonna be sustained if like everyone there is expected to mold themselves? It just wouldn't the be egalitarian. Of the community. It would be like um, dictatorship. Yeah, so if you're good with that. Yeah. <laughs> Um, like, maybe, I don't know, like, book, what do they call mm -hmm. buy, the buy nothing, nothing group yeah yeah nothing like nothing. you can give gifts yeah. to people you know you can trade yeah. work you can trade items right. so money doesn't have to be the only way i think i just want to do it like freestyle actually okay so um because i think that's kind of fun and like more in line with like the other ones where we're just like walking around or whatever yeah. so okay so i already hit record like about a minute ago um oh. <laughs> you're like oh not like that though <laughs> so i don't even know how i want to pose this question but yeah. originally my idea was to cover some of the challenges like kind of like just kind of highlight like different like what was difficult like why did the community fall apart a little bit i don't have the right phrasing uh, like point but, was i thought kind of shared things in time was was a key challenge in different communities and a little bit in this community like do you feel i felt like that was only minor for our community like yeah. we generally did an okay job yeah. with like shared things Definitely. yeah like i thought like i thought of the example of like i was concerned about like the shared computer mm -hmm. right like in the shop mm -hmm. like i was feeling like other people would have access to it mm -hmm. mm. What do you think? Like, do you think there's anything else about like community and sharing that's important to discuss? For me, it's never been much of an issue at all. Yeah, I do. I have noticed that. Like, you're 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 way more like, okay, like if we have food, we'll eat the food we have. If someone ate it, it's no big deal. <laughs> like, we'll Unless eat some other it's food. Like fucking raspberries. Don't. Touch <laughs> <them>. <laughs> right, but I feel like I feel like um communities like are made up of people who are more like you and some people who are more like me yeah. too yeah. right Sorry, so i feel like probably have to bleep out my cursing i feel like it's fine because <laughs> <laughs> it'll be all right um yeah i think that that's like the beauty of community in a way um you get to experience that so okay then the next one i had was um prioritization of community values did you feel like that was a good one or did you feel like I think it's a really good one in the way that, like, I would actually say to people who are looking to join a community mm -hmm. that one of the most critical things you need to figure out before you join a community is what your values actually are. And some of it, like, it's hard to say that because you don't really know until you actually try it out yeah you know like i agree you might think that you're one way but then you end up trying to do that and you're like actually this doesn't work for me at all yeah so part of the beauty of community is that we get to know ourselves better through relationship with other people but like i think a more core element is like make sure that you join a community that aligns at least with the values you think that you have mm. What are the examples of the values? Like, are you talking spirituality? Are you talking like dietary preferences, like, you know? If there's something that you really need in your life and the community doesn't have it, like you need to acknowledge that you're genuinely making a sacrifice yeah. for yourself. And that maybe it'll be tolerable for a month or two, but like over the years, it's not gonna work if that's like a fundamental key thing that you need i do feel like that comes from living in community like it'd be very hard yeah. to do it before you live in community yeah 
And so the other piece that I was going to say is that like, I think what's more important mm -hmm. than like personally understanding your own values is seeing if you're looking for a well-established community, knowing that their values are clear and solid. And you can't know that just by their website. Which I think was what I was going to say next, like to bring it back to this community, mm -hmm. like what was written was kind of different than like reality. Very different. Right. Which is like, yeah. Yeah. Like, a that's... very good point. And like, we wanted to grow all this food. We wanted to mm -hmm. do all the eco mm -hmm. initiatives and have all these animals mm -hmm. and all that stuff. But I think a challenge is like, we kept trying to do like community re-envisioning. And like we couldn't really, we couldn't really like get to the point where we all did because people themselves didn't know enough what they needed. So it's very hard to like. Honestly, my um, feeling was that we could have successfully done that had it not been for like a particular member who consistently prevented um, us like having genuine emotional growth with yeah. each other because they would just say like, I don't want to participate. I don't want to do that. Mm -hmm. Or they would say, that's not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And it kind of held us back, I felt. I felt like there were strong personalities and like kind of um, blocks of advancing the, the discussion. I think I think there was mm -hmm. another piece where like, we are multi-generational. Yeah. And like the, the people who are like our generation, like mm -hmm. have one kind of like one idea of how fast mm -hmm. we wanted to get things done. Mm -hmm. And then there's like <laughs> another whole, right? Like there's another, tier of folks who mm -hmm. had a little bit of a different idea mm -hmm. i like, think you're drawing yeah. out another what? important conflict yeah. in the community which is mm -hmm. how do we want progress to happen mm -hmm. and how fast do we want progress to happen yeah there's so much discussion right. around like should we spend extra money to just get the items we need mm -hmm. to do the development now or should we be more sustainable and wait to find those items, wait for them to come to us, do it with less machinery, less fossil fuel, Absolutely. and that's a constant source of tension. And for me, I kind of wrapped it all under the umbrella of like um, prioritization of, mm. what did I call it? Yeah, prioritization of community values. Cause I mm -hmm. see like, I see the like, resource use and how we value our time because yeah. we've had this discussion yeah. where we're like like our time is actually yeah. like a commodity not a commodity but like something it else kind we, of is right yeah. like something else we need to make sure we're we're um taking into account because mm -hmm. in a community that's i feel like that's super important yeah definitely cool. yeah mm -hmm. but i feel like that covers it for for me a little bit cool. i think for um am i in the shot you are totally in the shot i think i might have to move i see the steam of my team <laughs> <laughs> you can see the same if you see. I have to move where the paper towels are and then I'll be okay. in the shot also. I'm sorry that you weren't. Don't okay. worry. Will the light no be okay? Yeah, it's all right. This is super low budget. Also, we can no ads. light on. <laughs> <laughs> we can see if that helps. That's um, so weird. No, I don't think so. And I think we can like move around too if we want. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, so the third one I had listed was um in terms of like a challenge was power structure and yeah. i really do feel like in in most communities like power mm -hmm. structure is a very like core central like foundational what do you call it yeah like it's very foundational to how your community will unfold and, oh yeah yeah and like particularly Key. yeah so hearing that what what are your thoughts when i say like power structure I would kind of reiterate what I started to say with um, the community values piece. Like, before you commit to a community long term, be extra clear on what the power structure is and do not trust the website. Like, you need, honestly, this is why so many communities have people come for a trial period it's not just for them it's for you too like use that time to critically and like carefully watch the interactions and see like 
not only what is the on paper stated power structure, but what is actually manifesting as the interpersonal power structure? Right. Like, is there a certain person who has a lot of influence on people, even and if technically and you're directions? Equal? Yeah. 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 And I feel like for me, I picked that up. Like, I had, I had like inklings of like things aren't quite right. Mm -hmm. Like the first or second month mm -hmm. that I've been here, I feel mm -hmm. like, I feel like when I first moved here, there were more people. So mm -hmm. it wasn't maybe as obvious. Mm -hmm. Like, did you feel like you felt it like way early on or like wish you had been more aware? I felt it before I even got here. Well, yeah, there's a whole like tent thing. Yeah. Was, like, yeah. And I was a woofer, but it was like, I didn't know exactly who it was coming from or what it looked like. And over time it's become very clear but I would say, like, trust your intuition, mm -hmm. you know? Like, <clears throat> if you get a feeling that something is off, take your time before you jump in. Yeah. yeah. Although I feel like I still, like, because, unfortunately, there aren't that many communities mm -hmm. out there, mm -hmm. like, I think I still would have moved here, mm -hmm. like, knowing, like, mm -hmm. knowing how it would have ended, mm -hmm. I still would have chosen mm -hmm. to have the experience because I feel mm -hmm. we can take this experience and go elsewhere and start different communities or join different communities that would do better. Totally. <clears throat> like my my yeah. definite feeling is that it's usually better to be in community than not in community mm -hmm. because even with all of the struggle and complication, yeah. we learn so much yeah. about ourselves and other people and the planet. Like the lessons are the, the yeah. most important thing we take away and sometimes the lessons are hard but like yeah. that willingness to move through it is is what makes it work yeah and so yeah like i would just say listening to your intuition about the power structure in order to like go into it knowing what you're getting yourself into mm -hmm. like you can say, I'm choosing to go into this thing that isn't perfect or isn't exactly what I would like it to be, but at least I know that's what I'm doing. Right. And I think there have been other people who, for example, came to this community like truly thinking that it was egalitarian and kind of got crushed or mm. pushed out because they tried to live that way. I feel that way somewhat, mm -hmm. but I feel like I knew that I was like, going up against that's what i was gonna say too yeah. i feel like i feel like in our situation i feel pretty good that we gave it a good few months like trying to call for for what we were expecting mm -hmm. saying like mm -hmm. hey like this isn't panning out the way we were expecting mm -hmm. we wanted to make some changes that mm -hmm. feel like they're completely reasonable um and it all like kind of one step after another started to fall apart like we did yeah. what we could yeah. to try to make this community egalitarian but in the end in the end like yeah feels pretty good like mm -hmm. like definitely lesson learned definitely like mm -hmm. feel good about what we were able to do to try to correct it yeah um, we just yeah. like neither of us had like towards the end like we were both mm -hmm. residents and we didn't have voting rights um even though we were very committed um, and have lots of different ideas about how mm -hmm. to make a really successful community. Mm -hmm. and feel pretty good about. Yeah. Unfortunate, but. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's kind of a good summary. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, part of me wants to talk about like which power structure is my favorite or which I think is the best, but I don't mm -hmm. think that's as important as like your personal values need to truly be in alignment mm -hmm. with like what the community's structure is, yeah. you know? Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a good note to take away on. Um, can I go into the next item that I have? Sure. Written down? Yeah. yeah. So uh, for the next challenge, I wrote down for number four, uh, turnover rate as mm -hmm. a challenge. Yes. Thoughts? Um. I do think that this is a challenge for almost every single community and it's one of those like key sticky ones that actually is like almost no matter what community you are, no matter where you are, um, 
this is something you'll face. Mm -hmm. And so it's more about how can you design a system which is like as safe and insulated from that as possible, yeah. but more in a way that like is good at, you basically have to make space for the turnover rate inherently. Yeah, you have to acknowledge that it's gonna happen. I agree. Yeah. I feel like I feel like what you were saying about systems and making it more resilient and flexible where mm -hmm. if people need to leave for a few months and come back, like they can pick right mm -hmm. back up. Like I feel like mm -hmm. sometimes like people will make excuses for not wanting to use systems and being like, Well, but we do it this way and I can't really instill it. Mm -hmm. Whereas like I personally feel like that's not true. Like even if I'm like repairing something or I'm like organizing something, mm -hmm. I can clearly be like this is where it goes and you can do it your way. But it can mm -hmm. still be easy for anyone to pick it up. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, more systems for sure. Mm -hmm. And I feel like I feel like the point would be to ease the um, the stress from the turnover. Like even yeah. if it's like sheep, right? Mm -hmm. Like something more difficult, like mm -hmm. milking sheep. Like you do mm -hmm. want some consistency. You want mm -hmm. the same people, mm -hmm. but like the other, all the other peripheries. Yeah. Like, and it's <clears throat> harder to mm -hmm. have that with limited people. Mm -hmm. But I think one thing that we kept really stressing, well, at least some of us in the community over time, is um, there's a certain word for it. I can't think of it right now. But it's basically that, like, as much as possible, everyone knows how to do everything. Mm -hmm. What was it called? Yeah, like, skill, skill sharing? Yeah. Class building um i can't remember the term right now but like that's important for so many reasons it's really critical for me because just like sharing skills is sharing power mm -hmm. in a way um yeah for sure you're empowering other people by giving them an ability to do something that is life-sustaining in a community mm -hmm. and like withholding that is is problematic but i don't think a lot of people see it that way mm -hmm. i think we do need to shift our focus to like you know when we all work together and when we all understand it we're better off and that really insulates for the turnover mm -hmm. like if everyone is trained in skills if one person needs to go, it's like, no problem. There are t at least two or three yeah. other people who can take care yeah. of this for you, you know? For me, I feel like Listening Tree really, like, could have benefited from a core group of folks who just, like, had a little, like, just a little more tenure would have made such a difference because mm -hmm. that whole, like, relying on, like, a core group of leaders who could just, like, be like, hey, like, this needs yeah. some attention. Basically, and like, people community elders. Like, yeah. they're not necessarily older. Right. But they have that experience to pass right. down. Right. Mm -hmm. Which I feel like, for us, like, there were founders, and then the two founders split up. Yeah. And, like, that really, that really, like, caused a bit of a rift. Mm -hmm. And the rest of us community members who got mm -hmm. here later on wasn't really able to benefit from yeah that knowledge transfer yeah yeah totally so mm -hmm. i feel i feel that like successful communities could like really it, you'd really go far if you had a good core group of a few people yeah and sure. not only that but i think having um recorded files about mm. the systems that are actually accessible and well organized is very important mm -hmm. like in prior communities that i've lived in it was so helpful to see like, wow, someone who was here like 10 years ago mm -hmm. made this diagram for the battery pack and like 20 people have been yeah. able to go learn from that yeah. because it's been available and mm -hmm. passed down. Mm -hmm. So that's a way to ensure like, even if there is that turnover, that the knowledge still carries mm -hmm. on. Yeah, super yeah. important, I think. Yeah. I think I'm realizing right now that a big need I have is for there not to be so much resistance, because as we're talking, I feel like I feel like there was so much resistance, right? Like I can like I can work with a lot, but it is really draining to have so much resistance with yeah. everything that we tried to do. So. Yeah, I mean, just a, like a side note is like, mm -hmm. don't be in community if you're not prepared to be flexible. Yeah, like we have to work right. with others right. and 
most of the time we are compromising yeah. and not getting exactly yeah. what we wanted. The beauty of that is that sometimes the compromise is actually better for yeah, both people. Yeah, for sure. But it is hard. Like I know that I only have spent like a little bit of time in community. So like my tendency is to like know which way I want to do a certain thing mm -hmm. and not going to not go into something and be mm -hmm. like, oh, well, there are like a billion ways we could do mm -hmm. it. Like, what do we all think? Mm -hmm. And yeah, I feel I feel like you learn that in community. Mm -hmm. You get you practice and you become better at mm -hmm. doing that. Mm -hmm. And it teaches you to evaluate like what is something that's like a true deep need yeah. or concern for me and what can I just kind of give up? Like right. <laughs> I've never felt in community like if there was something I was really strongly serious yeah. about that I couldn't say like, hey, this is important to me mm -hmm. and at least be taken seriously, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. There's a lot of like self-growth and emotional growth in that aspect. Yeah. 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 Sure. Cool. <laughs> Yeah, I feel like we covered that one pretty well. Oh, yeah. Um, okay, so number five I had written down was trauma and then and healing mm -hmm. was added on. Mm -hmm. So let me think. So I was thinking really more specifically to our community, how trauma really was a big part, really, in the things that happened towards the end. Mm -hmm. I felt like different community members were really experiencing like triggering events mm -hmm. and like I was experiencing triggering events mm -hmm. which caused me to withdraw and like not interact as much with the community mm -hmm. other community like trauma was just such a big part yeah. right yeah yeah um I think this is another one of those sticky ones that mm -hmm. is impossible for any community to avoid like every single human on this planet is on a healing journey right now because mm -hmm. we all to varying degrees experience trauma and pain throughout our life whether that's like the trauma of being born like emerging from this safe womb into the crazy yeah. world all the way up to like you know these somewhat unimaginable things that happen to people and so like it's similar to the sustainability issue where it's like how much do we want to offer the flexibility mm -hmm. of like healing mm -hmm. and offering that healing to people who are struggling versus needing stability and solidity mm -hmm. in our community and needing community members who we can rely on and like, this is one that I think, I feel like you could actually do an entire video okay. on this particular topic, just cause there's so many elements to it. Um, but hey, hey, how'd it go? Hi. Terrible. Oh no, what happens? Just bumper to bumper tracker the whole way there and back. Oh and no. <sighs> We're making a video right now. There's, there's no way we can be out of here. Bye. On our schedule. Oh no. Because of the traffic? Because the plan was to get several loads of stuff there today and... I see. Sorry. It's no, okay. it's okay. It's frustrating. They took you because they took you that long to do one load. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Are the roads like especially bad today or... Oh, it's like the 23rd. Yeah. I mean, the highway in both directions. People are like traveling mm -hmm. for Christmas. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I took Middle Spring back and that was a parking lot. Mm -hmm. Do you mm -hmm. mind being in the background doing stuff while we finish this? Or we can also go to a different yeah. spot. Yeah, we can. Okay. Yeah, we can do that because we're done eating. Mm -hmm. Cool. Where do you want to go? Um, anywhere. We're done. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah, there might be good lighting in that. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Just some like vegan fake chicken things. Oh. It's like comfort food. Why haven't you eaten them? Are because we've been doing a video and I feel <laughs> weird about stuffing my face on the video. I was wondering because like they look kind of good, but like if you were avoiding them. Cause... No. funny i was watching um eternal sunshine of the spotless mind 
And then like last night I was sleeping on the couch and like when I woke up, like a shelf was gone because you guys are moving and I was like, <laughs> I was like, this is so weird. Like, it's like, it's, um, have you not seen it? Mm -mm. It's, uh, it's like one of those like Donnie Darko-y, like oh, okay. one of those like, what do you, yeah, what do you call those? Like mind, mind, mind bending, um, whatever, whatever ones. You should watch the movie. I think you will like it a lot. It's so crazy. It's the 23rd of December. I always forget that that's, that that's long, not. Like... <laughs> oh, wait. Yeah, that should be fixed. It's a leather rib one. If we open the windows, then we mm. get more light, but maybe this is okay. Yeah, I think it'd be all right. So how, where do you want to sit? I don't know yet. On the I floor? Sit here. Yeah, go for it. I'll just sit on the ground with a cushion. Okay. With a cushy. Or you could bring that rocking chair over here. I could do that. It works. Cool. What was this stuff? What was this plan? Were they like mums or something? Um, no, it was. What the fuck is that called? I know what it's called, but I can't think of it. But nobody knew where it came from. Huh. So they kind of just. Let it die. Yeah, they do come back yearly though, so maybe they will. Mm -hmm. I feel like you still do have to water it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've done that before. I'm like, this one's a lost cause. <laughs> like, it might come back. Cool. I would be closer for you. Yeah, that's good. You think? Okay, well, we're. So I think we were wrapping up. What were we wrapping up? Mm. Turnover? I think so. Yeah. And moving on to the next one. Mm -hmm. Which is. No, we were talking about trauma. And mm. healing. That's where we were at. Mm. Yeah. And. We hadn't finished. Yet. We hadn't. But okay. we were. You were you were saying how it's sort of like another thing you'll have to balance. Just like how much healing can you provide someone yeah and how much will it just have to be mm -hmm. someone's individual work mm -hmm. Sorry. do you feel like i was gonna ask you if you felt like communities um are a place where more trauma is sort of like worked on or exposure to because i've kind of said like i've kind of said like i did feel, feel that way um and i feel like you may feel like trauma is also at, like if you're living with family or if you're living with roommates, like it's yeah. still there. Exactly. You know what I'm, you, do you know what I'm asking? Yeah. Yeah. I think that the difference is in a lot of intentional communities, at least ones like, I, I think probably conservative Christian communities are not really mm -hmm. like this, but like the more kind of like liberal, lefty, open-minded, whatever kind of communities, most people tend to have had exposure to the concept of trauma mm -hmm. and like the value of psychotherapy and healing and this sort of thing yeah. and so people might like experience something and actually have the vocabulary to name like this is coming from my past trauma mm -hmm. or like they might have done the work of going and getting diagnosed with PTSD or something like that. Whereas a lot of people just like in everyday life, I think many, many families go without the exposure to that or without like acknowledging that it's a real thing for mm -hmm. them because of shame and this sort of stuff. And mm -hmm. so it's like, it's still going on. It's still affecting people. Mm -hmm. But the difference is like how it's talked about maybe. See, I have like a, a, a big follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like victimhood is more 
of a thing that will happen in communities do you feel like mm. do you feel like you know like it's like it can happen in families too and and it does happen with do some you families mean like people being victimized or are you saying you feel like people who kind of fit the victim narrative like tend to come together into communities a little bit of both i was more talking about like a tendency for folks to fall into either like oh i'm the victim and like pull the victim card yeah, yeah. or um what's the alternative like the other side of that i mean obviously that was an issue here right and i think it similarly relates because a lot of people honestly have a bit of an immature view in my opinion my mm -hmm. personal opinion of like social justice mm -hmm. like a lot of people in this sort of world have had some exposure to that and they think that it's very like a binary sort of thing of like there's a good person and a bad person mm -hmm. and the good person who had something wrong done to them is the victim the bad person is whatever the perpetrator um and i think a lot of people do it subconsciously but people who have exposure to this world are like it's to my advantage to be a victim because i get sympathy and empathy from people and like this is in no way victim blaming like i myself acknowledge that I have PTSD, I've experienced trauma, I've been victim blamed and it feels terrible. And so it's a really difficult line to walk. Like nobody wants to say like your trauma is invalid or your trauma isn't real. Mm -hmm. And that's not what I'm implying at all. But I think like there are ways that we give up our personal power mm -hmm. by constantly identifying as a victim mm -hmm. rather than stepping into like, I can take charge over my own life and be responsible for myself. Mm -hmm. And that's a critical piece in healthy community. Yeah. Is that people are not always deflecting the fault and the mm -hmm. responsibility onto others. Yeah. So you had another experience at, like, the Homestead in college. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like there was some of the same theme going on there? At With, all? like, trauma and healing mm -hmm. and victimhood? Yeah. Um, yes right because like i'm just <laughs> trying exactly like this is my only community i've been at mm -hmm. and i'm like drawing the like hypothesis that mm -hmm. most communities will tend to have some type of it's it's a challenge like the other things like it's kind of like i, I see it as a challenge the problem right. is that a lot of people have this utopian idealized mm -hmm. view of community going in mm -hmm. and they're like all of these people are going to hold my exact same values and therefore they're going to be just like me and it's going to be like a perfect little mm. world where we all get along yeah. and like we might say oh no i would never think that but in the back of our mind that's our hope and yeah, our dream for like getting together with a whole bunch of people yeah and that's that kind of values. true right it kind of right. is that way and yet we're all imperfect humans right who are basically a family yeah. that has its problems. And I feel that way too. I feel like another piece of it is it might just be confusing because normally people would live with that most like one or other two other people. Mm -hmm. Like when you have a big collective group, like you mm -hmm. tend to have more events and drama and yeah. and trauma and mm -hmm. everything else. So mm -hmm. it's like mm -hmm. I do realize it's not like does community equal mm -hmm trauma mm -hmm. it's just like when you have a whole bunch yeah. of people and you, where this kind of loops it. back mm. with the social justice issue is the cancel culture element mm. like with families there's more of a push of like you know there's yeah. a reason that the parents yeah. don't want to break up the mm -hmm. kids can't stop being siblings mm -hmm. the kids are inherently reliant on their parents so yeah. people have more pressure to yeah work it out mm -hmm. and stick together whereas people in this situation think we don't always realize it but we tend to embrace at least right now in this time mm -hmm. this cancel culture thing of like if you did this to me then you're a bad person and you need to leave you know mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. like i'm done with you and mm -hmm. we have much more 
complex limits in that way with family, I think. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It does. It does. And, like, in this situation, I can see, like, both sides. Like, our side of, like, thinking, like, okay, the founder did something and, like, it was justification and we really were trying to live with her. And, and it was that not, was, like, yeah, we gave a lot of chances. Yeah. We tried for a mm -hmm. long time. And right. that's how I would feel with a family member. Like, I've mm -hmm. done that. Like That's true, yeah. You know, I've tried so many times with right. you and you've never changed and so I can't. Right. Whereas I feel like on the other side, they might feel like, wow, like you didn't even try that long or like, mm -hmm. you're right. So mm -hmm. I just, I feel like, I bet the two sides will see differently than this. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there is a difference. Like there are really times in community where people are like, this one person did this one thing and therefore like they're out. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like that is definitely a challenge to a community. Yeah. It's like, how do you structure your yeah. members yeah and when is it time to yeah and that yeah, relates to the power yes structure mm -hmm. it also relates to the turnover mm -hmm. um i think like also creating a system a community element that acknowledges this problem mm -hmm. is super important sure. like from the beginning we're gonna say that we know there might be times where people don't want to live with each other anymore. Yeah. How do we handle that? Yeah. On the topic of policy, I feel like that is very, uh, it can be complex or, or difficult um, to guide communities with policies. Like I was thinking mm. this towards the end, we were kind of like, okay, there's this policy in question and how much did it have an effect and like how much were we supposed to have mm -hmm. had it already in place mm -hmm. versus like have said something about mm -hmm. it because like a lot of like the member like mm -hmm. the member voting rights and kind of the um bylaws and whatever else it's like mm -hmm. what was i supposed to have done like yeah like been like hey like i want to live here but like i don't agree with like mm -hmm. i need the immediate change of all of these so that in the future if something were to happen i would have voting rights i feel like that's what i mean like mm -hmm. it's like impossible to be set up by the owners like the founders perfectly and inherently the system is such that like people who want to change it won't ever have the power yeah. to change it well i think that that is the case with the particular power structure right. of right. this community right agreed. agreed whereas you can structure a community yeah. in a way that that's not true agreed. so the problem that i see with this community was that, like you said, mm -hmm. like a core group of community elders was lost. Mm -hmm. We only had one community member mm -hmm. who was from like any amount of years yeah. prior. Yeah. It was only people with a few months of experience right. and this other person. Yeah. So all of those people were voicing like, mm -hmm. this is not matching my values. Mm -hmm. I don't feel fully included. We need to re-envision yeah. our community because it was a new community. It's true. This right. is the reality. Mm -hmm. yeah. Like it had transformed and become something else right. and we wanted the policy to be in alignment with yeah. what it had become to yeah. be created by us. And so if it's just one person who is like being introduced to this already functioning, large, thriving community, of course, you don't come in there and just say, like, change this, change that, change that. That's true. You know, over time, your voice is more and more taken seriously. And you can say, like, hey, there's this one thing I'd like to maybe tweak. With us, it was so different. Mm -hmm. Like, we really were recreating a community from See, the I bottom feel like, up. I feel like we all were. And then, like, this the person. elder, like, who, like, did see it as, like, well, there was, like, a foundation of a few years where the people might be gone, but like they were like they were everything like, needs to still match this. Yeah, like yeah. their idea, which I see some validity in that, like in mm -hmm. them being like, right, like there's been a history of this, like we had already worked on this. I'm not quite ready to give up the model that we've been trying to work on. And maybe that's yeah. what you need to do, though. Maybe to, like, I to have your community yeah. continue to agree, which is why <laughs> it's not continuing. Yeah, it's all falling apart yeah. because people have decided what ultimately was most important to them yeah to make decisions based on it yeah so, yeah yeah i think that was good yeah, yeah. I, would, I think that was really good and yeah, kind of covers that i want to make sure it's still recording which it is
which is good because I cleared up memory beforehand mm. to make sure. Mm -hmm. um, and also, like, at the beginning of this, like, at some point, I'm going to show, like, how we found, like, Listening Tree on IC.org. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so, and also, like, in IC.org, I looked, like, the other day, it already says disbanded. And, yeah. like, you can, it says disbanded, and, like, it's public information. So, like, mm -hmm. Karina's name's on there, and she wrote yeah. a little blurb. So, I think we can, like... Very interesting. Yeah, I saw yeah, it, and I was that. like, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I don't have access to it, but... Anyway, but I think we can use, we can use her name, because it's public. Yeah. Just yeah. so you know. What I'm going to do is type in the name of my community, my former community. And I know that there's been a recent update to this. Um, sadly, it already says disbanded. And a little bit about the community I lived at. We were formed about five years ago. I moved in six months ago, and I was able to spend six months there. Uh, Karina's the founding member, and she, along with two others, uh, her former, as you can see, this is recently updated. I just read it about a minute ago. Um, she founded the community with her partner, uh, Jim, and her friend, uh, Pip. So the three of them had kind of put a lot of these policies together. Um put a lot of the, what I come to have known that a lot of these were actually aspirational. Uh, we wanted to be growing about 50 to 70% of our food, I think it says here, but that was really difficult to be able to do uh, with the number of people that we have. Like, and, and you can imagine like if you have eight people, the amount of work you can do is way different, like drastically different than if you had three people and at some time some point in time when I was there towards the end it was really down to three people um anywho so just wanted to cover really quickly we were on 33 acres of land um we had enough room for 10 people max and um our requirements the key things it, it was four hundred dollars to live there which is pretty inexpensive for the state of Rhode Island even uh the labor expectation was 10 to 15 hours um, I wonder if it says down here, but it was 10, 10 to 15 hours of work, um, and our priorities ranged from growing food, building out the community, animal care, and um, really like fostering the community and outreach and getting more folks. So sort of keeping up with things that are going to like continue to wear down. Uh, and and the food, food and herbs. So I'd say those are our major major goals. Um, and let's get into those seven challenges. Um. So okay. Uh, the next point that I felt was is was a challenge for us and also for different communities. Definitely is finances. In a lot of ways. Yeah. Um. And really, for me, that comes down to like people need to live places and right now the way our society works that costs rent mm -hmm. um and to upkeep a place like who who owns the piece of land that mm -hmm. the community is sharing right mm -hmm. um and how do you make like monthly operational expenses yeah. lower than your your costs yeah so like finances and community i feel like really is a big core like pillar of how you can like what you need to have a functional yeah. community yeah and i feel like we lack that for sure here oh yeah we did so i just said a whole lot your thoughts no that's good <laughs> yeah um this is one that i see as not being as like no matter what this is going to be a big struggle for you in the community mm. i think that there are some communities who have it more figured out than others mm -hmm. um there are a few types of communities which just do really well. Like a lot of like ecotourism communities mm -hmm. um, that like host guests. Mm -hmm. um, if they know how to market themselves, like there isn't a ton of worry about money mm -hmm. so much. Um, you're not going to be rich, but like you mm -hmm. can definitely sustain, sustain. yourself. Yeah. Um, whereas there are lots of other community types where you have to, I guess, get more creative and look for multiple streams of mm -hmm. income. Um, 
because it's just it's it's difficult yeah it's for me I feel I feel like when I look for a new community to join or mm -hmm. one to start mm -hmm. I feel like focusing on finances like early on yeah. is just so important just yeah. to like really understand like are we open to different yeah. ways like are you actually financially healthy yeah. and I feel like especially for us here we just there's a lot of hope going on it was like a lot of hopeful like we needed to get to like six or seven residents and towards the end we were still at three or four mm -hmm. and there were no concrete paths to like okay how do we attract people mm -hmm. how do we have adequate accommodations mm -hmm. to attract the right people mm -hmm. um and no like thriving mm -hmm. like actual community business to mm -hmm. to pull on mm -hmm. and just for me there just was not actually a plan that we all agreed okay. on to get there yeah yeah and so there's two kind of pieces there one is that the foundational structure of the community was flawed mm -hmm. like it is important to recognize that this community was fairly young and new. Mm -hmm. It was five years old, I think. Yeah. And so, you know, not everything is going to be perfect by that time. But because Karina, the founder, had so much of her own money that she put into this place, I don't think that she really considered very much the longer term economic sustainability for the community or other people because she saw it so much as being like mm -hmm. her own thing where she was like well I'm gonna be sustained you know like I don't know how much of it was her intentionally not caring or how much of it was her maybe just missing that point because of her own blinders mm -hmm. of her privilege mm -hmm. but um I think what that caused is that we were trying to play catch up mm. this time. Like, okay, well, we definitely do need a business for this community to yeah. be sustainable. Yeah. So, like, it's five years in and there's nothing going. Like, what little scraps can we put together to try to start something? Yeah. Whereas that should be starting in, like, year one, year two. Yeah, and I feel it goes also back to the resistance because... Um, we had ideas of having different tiers, like some people can pay a lower amount and, mm -hmm. and, and work more if mm -hmm. that's what's available yeah. for them. Yeah. And some folks can pay like 600 and work maybe a little less if they mm -hmm. had a full-time job. Mm -hmm. I feel like there was, just going back to it, a lot of resistance. Like I feel like even if I were like, hey, like I have, I wanna buy in and I want more say. Like mm -hmm. while like by the policy, like we were supposed to have equal power, mm -hmm. but like that, that wasn't true, right? Mm -hmm. But if I were even like, hey, like I'm about to be a resident, like owner member, mm -hmm. like I have this like amount of dollars I would really like to invest. And like, mm -hmm. I really see a side business with my woodworking and I wanna like buy out this piece. Mm -hmm. I feel like, that would have still been a no. Like I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty sure. Like this community would not have been accepted, accepting of that idea. Like like you and Tim would, but like that was the thing. Like we kept trying to like exercise our rights, mm -hmm. and like we were successful yeah. zero times. Like yeah. ultimately, the flaw of this community was that there was no willingness to 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 share the responsibility mm -hmm. even. I feel yeah yeah coming yeah, back I to the fact that. that the fact that like if there are other communities out there that are funded by like one member like I would mm -hmm. feel like that would be a red flag yeah right? that's what you were really mean. bringing yeah to as well yeah. like when you're looking at communities another thing I thought of is like if one or even two people mm -hmm. put all their money into it and they're the treasurer. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying it's impossible for it to be a good community, but be right. very wary. Like, and maybe it's just not the right community for us who have strong ideas of what, what we want. Like, there could be other people who are like, I just want to come here and like kind of be a woofer. Like, right? Yeah. yeah but like, yeah. how is a community going to be sustained if like everyone there is expected to? mold themselves it just wouldn't the be desires of the community. it would be like a um, dictatorship yeah so if you're good with that yeah <laughs> um, like, maybe, i don't know like <laughs> i see that work is there one where it's like do i want an egalitarian a dictatorship <laughs> I, there kind of is i don't think it says dictatorship but there might be one yeah. where it's like there is only yeah. one leader right exactly but like 
you know, the, the, the way that this community was, nobody would come if they saw oh, that. Oh, it was very, no, it was, like, very yeah. much, like, we don't have a leader. Like, we preached yeah. ourselves and, like, we don't have a leader. But that wasn't yeah. the reality right. behind the scenes. Right. Yeah. yeah. Right. Okay. So. Was that coming from finances? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, the thing is. It's true. Money is power. Money is power. Like, yeah. It, it shouldn't be, but in our society, mm -hmm. that's how it works. Yeah, for sure. Very real, yeah. so practical like, truth. Yes, mm -hmm. you need a structure yeah. that tries to economically support people yes. in an egalitarian way yes. if you want to have an actually egalitarian community. I think that's a really good point because I think, like, I'm coming out of this. Like, I have, like, worked corporate jobs. Like, I have, okay. like, other avenues to mm -hmm. explore and i feel like in community it could be where people haven't um haven't like thought through or they don't necessarily have a plan b and that makes it mm -hmm. difficult for them to exercise their rights like i was saying mm -hmm. or like to be able to find a different community to go to when you yeah. don't have the money yeah. you don't have yeah you don't have the ability yeah. to choose something else yeah. then you're more likely to be submissive yeah it, yes, yes. To be honestly, people are more likely to be taken advantage of mm -hmm. at times, I think. And mm -hmm. that's why a really important part, I think, of community structure is like that empowering people mm -hmm. with the skill teaching and knowledge. Mm -hmm. But that also comes into like giving people power to financially sustain mm -hmm. themselves so that they will, as much as we can, like help them to help each other to be in like a good place when we want to move on you know yeah like trapping people or like taking advantage of them being kind of trapped is is not a healthy mm -hmm. way to get members yeah i feel i feel that way for sure mm -hmm. yeah so the seventh one that i wrote down um for a key challenge is sort of like a summary of all the other ones and i have written down collective benefit versus individual need mm -hmm. and i was wondering if you would like rephrase that or if you mm -hmm. had so like we talked through six what do you think mm -hmm. kind of opening up this is one that is like debated about a lot in politics mm -hmm. because it's kind of talking about ideas of like socialism or tribalism versus like what's thought to be the American way of like independence and individuality. Mm -hmm. So I see, it just makes me think how communities are kind of like microcosms that reflect the macrocosm. Mm -hmm. Like the realities of the bigger world become more clear in these mini worlds. Yeah, I see that. Yeah. And so this is like something on the national scale that we're trying to figure out a lot right now is like how much do we need to set aside, you know, whatever, our money, our work, our time mm -hmm. um, for the benefit of others, of mm -hmm. the group, versus how much do we have a right to our own desires, wants, needs, right. yada, yada. I see it like with the very specific example of what happened here um, on both mm -hmm. sides. Like for us, like the three of us, you and me and Tim, mm -hmm. we decided that our our like emotional health mm -hmm. was a need that we needed to secure almost like yeah. over yeah. over over giving it even more time to see if it would get better mm -hmm. for, for Karina to maybe like recover a little bit mm -hmm. and then continue to live all together right mm -hmm. so like I see that as like us choosing our need in that way and like for sure for Karina like she chose her need to secure this place that she's lived at like kind of in her, a, finances. her, her finances her assets um, and she chose like the animals that she raised, although I guess they're sold now. Yeah. 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 yeah I mean, whatever. She, it yeah. was the money. Like, yeah. I don't <laughs> I don't wanna make the judgment, but it does does seem that way. Right. But which like it's very, very 
like practical and real like that's what people do people make decisions based on money and yeah. as much as i hate for that to be the case like that's what we're talking about yeah. collective good versus individual right. wants individual and like interests. money is like the epitome right. of individual interest right. in terms of economics like yeah. there are other ways to practice economics mm -hmm. we've just been talking about these groups on facebook what are they called mm -hmm. the buy, buy nothing, nothing group yeah the yeah nothing like project. you can give gifts yeah. to people you know you can trade yeah. work you can trade items right. so money doesn't have to be the only way and like when we get obsessed with the numbers, I think that's something mm -hmm. that can really pull us down. And that's another thing that I look for in community is like that it's not embodying that individualist view of like, mm -hmm. we're going to get rich here. Like join this community that's working in this company for the money. Mm -hmm. I don't want that because it's going to become toxic. I mm -hmm. think inevitably mm -hmm. people are going to fight over the money mm -hmm. and yeah, I think, I think Karina saw this place a lot more through that lens mm -hmm. than at least than I did because I'm not in her position where I have like hundreds of thousands of dollars in a bank account to mm -hmm. spare to buy this or buy that mm -hmm. for my strategic plans whenever I need to, you mm -hmm. know? And, and where that leaves me is that I'm kind of, where I've come to is like, as long as I can live and sustain myself, like I'm fine, you know, I'm, I'm alive. I'm mm -hmm. happy. I'm sharing my time with other people. Like I'm playing instruments and, mm -hmm. and it's life is beautiful, you know? For sure. And of course I want to be careful and want to take care of myself, but like, it's easier to not get lost mm -hmm. when you don't have all of that as a concern yeah like we were talking about it last night you become a slave to the money <laughs> yeah. like it kind of you know starts to dominate and take over because it's part of this whole system that tells you like you're not working hard enough you don't have enough mm -hmm. time it's also you're not saving enough money yeah for sure you know i feel like most everyone is in that little little loop yeah yeah and not recognizing yeah. their privilege like or the or almost the, everyone i know is yeah. doing that like oh yeah. but i'm saving up for my kids it's like okay yeah. but like i'm saving up for a vacation so we can all go on vacation and be happy like no and like so like it's it sounds crazy but it's really true like mm -hmm. during the course of this video like mm -hmm. a child has died because they mm -hmm. couldn't get medical equipment mm -hmm. or they couldn't eat enough mm -hmm. because of the result of western colonialism mm -hmm. that we're contributing to through our daily purchases at, on amazon mm -hmm. at the supermarket like mm -hmm. you know we're participating in an exploitative system yeah. and yes part of that we can't control mm -hmm. and on the other hand it's really critical that we're mindful yeah. of our own privilege and mm -hmm. and the effect that our actions have yeah. I think your point is like our inaction actually is harmful yeah to people exactly like us just literally us just living a normal life is very harmful to mm -hmm. lots of people mm -hmm. and a lot of folks don't yeah. think about it and never really even explore and they will even almost like turn away from it they don't want to know but because it hurts to know yeah. but yeah yeah it's like we have to face it in order to truly be happy no no amount of money that we have no things that we mm -hmm. buy is going to make us happy what makes us happy is a healthy community mm -hmm. <laughs> i agree happy people mm -hmm. make us happy for mm -hmm. me that's i'm really glad we got to do this yeah because yeah like you've been away for a while and i've moved and I'm really glad we got to do this because I think I will look back and watch this like years later <laughs> and it'll be so nice. Too, yeah. 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 And I'm excited to see what community you'll end up at. Yeah. Cause you know, I will. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I mean. Like I'm excited yeah. to see like what community you'll either start or which one you'll end up yeah. at or. And you too. Like yeah. if that happens. I for hope you. so. I feel like I could either like, not ever mm. like i can like so easily lose the side mm. don't you like 
Mm-hmm. You I don't know keep, if you would you agree. keep hanging out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I know that for me, I can, like, go back to, like, the normie life, mm-hmm. like, and just fit right mm-hmm. in and, like, mm-hmm. this is just, like, a blip. Or I could, wouldn't that be kind of sad? It would be it sad. It could happen, though. It would be sad. It's a choice for you to make. It's, it is. You know? Yeah. yeah. This is really beautiful to have it recorded yeah. at this point that we're at. I know. Mm-hmm. And there's a lot that we can share. Yeah. It was really cool doing this, and it's just giving me so many ideas. You should do it, too. You should do a whole bunch of stuff. That'd be cool. That inspires you. Yeah. Cool. Follow your dreams. <laughs> <laughs> cool. Should we end it with a hug? Yeah. Cool. I don't know if we'll be in the show. I guess if we're sitting. It's okay. They can just imagine. <laughs> just, just imagine. imagine it. I just packed up, I think, the very last of my things. Gave Tim and Yuri a hug. I think I might be leaving the farm for the very last time. Feeling a little bit emotional. It's only been like a week and a half since I've left the, the land. I'm calling it the land because really like it feels like land and I already felt so disconnected and being back here for a day I miss it so much okay I miss it so much and this might be the very last time that I'm here like I got all of my stuff I'm in, in the van got all my stuff <sighs> said goodbye to Tim and Yuri we might or might not come back on like the 28th but if we don't then that's it well been a good ride.